during this step, what we're going to be doing is gluing the fretboard onto your neck. And um, both of these, this, both sides um, have already been uh, machined nice and flat. So in the, in the past, we've had to sand them, but um, Steve assures me that that does not need to be done at this time. Um, you also have, you know, keep in mind your, your index line that you created earlier when you checked your scale length. And what we're going to need is wood glue and a truss rod. The truss rod is what we use later to make sure your neck is level. And you know, wood changes shape and bends depending on, um, it, you know, contracts and expands depending on humidity. So sometimes, you know, you, you will need to um, adjust your truss rod to get your neck to be level or create a, a relief. Um, so that's the purpose of this, for those of you that did not know that. So the first thing I like to do is just make sure that the truss rod goes in all the way. Usually it does, but sometimes, you know, you might have a little bit of wood or debris in here that will prevent it from going in all the way. And then you'd want to make sure that was clear first. So this one looks, is perfect. It goes in nice and easily. It comes right back out. And we're going to use this again later in this process. And then you're going to want a wet paper towel and a dry paper towel. I like to get all the dust off. And this wet paper towel we're going to use to get the glue off of our fingers. So um, another thing I wanted to mention is some um, teachers like to put a piece of tape down the middle of the, um, this channel where the truss rod goes because it prevents the glue from getting in. Um, there is some special type of painter's tape that is narrower than this. I think it's three quarters that works really well. This tape that we have today is a little wide and I, so I'm not gonna do that step um, because I think it will cover too much of the um, surface and I wanna make sure I get enough glue on here. So instead of using the tape, what I'm gonna do is just make sure that I don't use too much glue. So I just put a thin ribbon here, and then I'm gonna have you just help me to, I'll do this half and do that. You just wanna cover all the surface. And if you use a nice thin coat, I'm not gonna get, hopefully, a lot of extra that's gonna ooze into that channel there. Some whoops, if I do, then I'm just, just kinda scoop it back out. <laughs> Simply scoop it back out. <clears throat> and don't worry about any excess that spills out of the, the edge there. It's, we're going to sand that off later. And we can just, here, I'll give you this in a second. I think we're good here. There's just a little tiny bit in there. I don't think it's enough to be a problem. There you go. Wipe your extra off. Okay, and then I'm also going to put just a little bit along this edge and this edge, a lot less than what I just put there. And Steve and I were discussing this earlier, and we know that some instructors only put the glue on one side, and some do it on two sides. I prefer thin coats on both sides. From my experience, that works best. I'm just gonna make sure we don't have too much there. Yeah, I think that's perfect. The key is to really make sure you have edge, the, the glue pulled out to the edges all the way up and down. All the way to the edge, you don't that's want to have right. Any void there. Yeah, because otherwise, once, um, once it's all dry, you can kind of see from the side when there's like little gaps or, and things on the edge where the glue didn't quite go to the edge. And that, for me, that's another good reason to make sure that you, you have it on both sides because then you kind of just cover your bases there. Okay. I think this is good. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to just line this up here. See where her line is right there? So that's where we want the edge to be. And probably the hardest part when we're, we're gonna wrap this rubber band around is just keeping this at that line. 
Um, in the past, another thing we had done um, sometimes is tacked this down with a little tiny you know, nail that we would pull out later because we wanted to make sure it stayed centered. But we found that um, it self-centers with the rubber band pushing on both sides. So there's two ways of doing this part too. Some uh, instructors will start at one end and just wrap like this all the way around and that works really well. I, I like to do it in the middle and then kind of crisscross back and forth. That just is the way I learned in the beginning and the way that it works best for me. So what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to just kind of let this just shove right into mm -hmm. my diaphragm there. Mm -hmm. And if you just hold it, then get it right here. So I'm going to start here. And yeah, it's OK. You don't need to push, really. Just make sure that, yeah, that's perfect. So when, when this stretches, it kind of changes color as it becomes really tight. And that's how tight you want it to be. And you also want to start, make sure you start at the edges. Either end is the, one of the most important parts that has to be really good and tight. So start right here. And then, Christine, I'm going to have you just put your thumb right there. Like that, yeah. And I'm just going to crisscross it on the bottom and crisscross it on the top. This, this is a really long rubber band. Well, probably longer than we need, but that's okay. It's better to have it too long than too short. And yeah, easier to do with a partner. <laughs> I think. Doing it the other way, it's possible to do it yourself, but I've never mastered that way. <laughs> this is my other way I do it. You want to keep your eye on that pencil line before you get too far. <clears throat> yeah, the, this one is its perfect. It's right on the pencil line. But that is a really good suggestion. Yeah, because the glue is you know, lubricating those Surfaces. Yeah, it's slippery, light. yeah. But um, as you can see from watching Christina holding that, it, was not, it wasn't difficult to do that. As long as you're aware of it, it's not hard. It's just something to keep in mind. Okay, then in the end, I just wrap the extra around. And you can tuck it under, or you can tie a little knot. Um, okay, and then I might want to move some of this more toward the end. Make sure it goes all the way to the end. So this hangs out a little bit, and that's fine. When I say to go to the end, I mean the end of this. So then before you, know, you walk away, you want to make sure, is it on the line, the index line? Yes. Is it pretty evenly spaced all the way down? Yes. Is it all the way to the end here, all the way to the end here? Yes. And then if you want to, you can, you know, she has a little excess glue here. I think just the perfect amount. You want a little bit because that means that it's gone all the way to the edges. But we're going to use cabinet scrapers tomorrow to scrape off any excess glue. So that's not a problem. That glue right there next to the nut, <clears throat> mm -hmm. it's, a good, it's a good idea to get that off of there while it's still wet. Oh, this up at the top? Well, easier. yeah, we're going to sand that. but. Um, here. That's Yeah, it is easier now. Oh yeah, and the one last thing too um, is we now use this like a, you know, like a dipstick or I don't know what you want to call it, but it goes all the way in and when you pull it out, you want to see if there's any glue. And look at that, there's really very, very little glue that got into the slot, even though we didn't use any tape. This works without tape, but it, you know, I think it, it's, um, easy to get way too much glue in there and so often. If, so if you use a lot of glue and the, when you pull this back out, there's a lot of glue on here, you just take the wet paper towel, wipe it off, and then you keep putting it back in, out until um, no more, kind of like sticking a toothpick in a cake and then it, when the batter's still on it, you have to bake it longer. It's kind of like that. 